Hello there, everyone. I'm Barry Burgess, and I'm here with Carmion for Crafts and Cocktails. Now it's Memphis Christmas. Now it's Memphis Christmas. <laughs> In my uh -huh. mind, mom said, just pay for the toilet paper and the paper towels. And Dad said, I need about 600 a month. <laughs> what you mean? I live with this man. <laughs> groceries every week like that's my daddy what do you mean all the things life and family and our first drink together cheers hey friends it's carmion hamilton memphis-based interior designer hgtv host extraordinaire and a girl that just loves to have a cocktail every now and then and we are back with another episode of crafts and cocktails with carmion hamilton and today we have a very, very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, my dad, Barry Burgess. Everybody say yay! That's me, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, it is so hard getting this man on camera because he is always like, ugh, anytime I pull out my phone. So the fact that he said yes and agreed to this like, I'm a little nervous. I almost turned around on the way over here. <laughs> Just so you know. I I promise to keep it light. I won't embarrass the family. <laughs> We're keeping it light today. But I could not do this series without him because his fan base is just as big as mine. I don't know why. I interrupt my day by sharing anything about this man because anytime I do, that's it. That's that's all that we're discussing for the rest of the day is, where is he? What are you doing? What are you doing? Where's the man? <laughs> anyway, but I have him with me today for a little bit of fun, a craft, and a cocktail. So let's get started. For today's cocktail, we're going to be making a silent night. You guys may know it as a white Russian. I am new to the eggnog game. Dad, you drink eggnog? A little bit. A little, little bit. Yeah. Little bit of eggnog, so this should be fun. Now we are going to start with our shaker and it has ice in it already. All right. While I'm making this cocktail, first question out of the gate, Dad. Okay. When was your, what was your first alcoholic beverage, and when was it? When was uh, it ingested? Beer. Beer. Uh, yeah, when I was in about 10th grade, hanging out with a friend and I had about three beers, and I got drunk. <laughs> and it probably was about five more years before I had another one. Another drink. Yeah. 10th grade, so you were about 15. Yep. And five years, so it was 20 before you had another cocktail, or? Yeah, I felt pretty bad after those three beers. I'm sure you did. All right, we got a little bit of vodka. So we have two ounces for daddy. We got two ounces for me. Fun fact, friends, I never saw my parents drink growing up. I didn't know they drank at all. Didn't see my dad have a drink ever until my sister's wedding. Like, Chelsea got married, what, seven years ago? Eight years ago? And I was like, uh, I fell off the wagon. <laughs> it's time to start drinking again. <clears throat> okay, okay, in between being 20 and seven years ago, did you, did you drink? Oh, a little bit, occasionally, not much. I'm a wine drinker. Wine. Yeah. I didn't even see you drink wine. We got some espresso liqueur, and we're gonna do two ounces, one each for the both of us. All right, wine. Are you a red or white? Red. Drinker? Red. Same. We are red over here. Uh oh. Whatever tastes oh, yeah. good. I ain't partial. I'm not loyal to Would nobody. you would you call yourself a, a wine connoisseur? No. Do not you at not? All. <laughs> Absolutely not. They all taste the same. <laughs> it's either sweet or dry. Okay. Or in between. Or in between. I I would agree. I like the in-between. Me too. All right, and we got some Southern Comfort eggnog. 
because we're southern and i'm gonna do about six oh. ounces of eggnog. And Where'd you get this recipe? Colin. Oh. <laughs> My art director. So I'm gonna close this up and let you shake it. And as you're shaking, I'm going to get us some ice in our glasses. So you shake, rip it around. Little ice for you know, shaking out with some enthusiasm. We gotta froth that egg in there or something. You scared of that egg? I'm huh? scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna drink egg. Hence why I've stayed away from eggnog for so long. Okay. I think it done shook it enough. I think I think it might be whipped cream by now. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Get a little bit for you. It looks good. It does. It does. Some for you. A little bit for me. This is the first like intentional drink I've had with my dad. Isn't that something? I am 38 years old. All right, now, what are we drinking again? <laughs> <laughs> a silent night. A silent, silent night. night. We got a garnish though. Get your here. Oh. That's a cinnamon stick for okay. you. A little cinnamon stick for me. Cause you gotta make it cute. And we have some star of anise. It smells like licorice. I don't know if I'm gonna put this in mine. Mm. You like If it? you want it, I, I want it. Okay, try there you go. Try. I'll leave it out of mine. And then we have, we got a little cinnamon okay. to sprinkle on top. You need the aromatics, cause you want your drink to smell good mm. while you're sipping on it. That's part of the mm. cocktail process. It's a whole experience. So, cheers, Dad. Cheers. To all the things, life and family, and our first drink together. And your first time on camera <laughs> with me. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Mm. That's what do you good. think? That's kind of good. That's pretty good. That's kind of good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Good job, Colin. <laughs> yeah. I made it, but okay. Good job, Colin. <laughs> I like that. Let's make a craft, why don't we? All right, so we have our cocktails, our silent nights, because eventually somebody will be silent. Drinking these, now it's time for a craft. We are making some Christmas trees. We're decorating some Christmas trees, but these are cardboard form Christmas trees, and I love these for uh, tablescapes, you can put these in the center of your dining tables, you can put them on your credenzas, your fireplace mantles, wherever, but you can personalize these little cardboard forms to your heart's desire, and that's what we're doing today. We got all kinds of supplies, yarn, gold leaf, spray paint, paint, you can draw on them, put furry balls on them, whatever you want. Ribbon, so that's what, that's what we're working on today. So. Dad, what is your poison you're picking today? How about I hold it still while you paint it? <laughs> where you get all? This, where you think you got all this creativity from? Is that your mom? Oh, or... I'm being interviewed. Um, because you know I ain't got none, so you know. I wouldn't say that you don't have any. I feel like I, I also like your creativity comes out in your in your outfits, like. He could put he could put a look together now. A little bit. He could put a look together. So that's your form of creativity. Also, you're you have to move. Like you play ball, you now get into golf a little bit. Yeah. Like your your creative juice comes out in like movement, mm -hmm. I believe. But all these colors and uh, all these fabrics and all this stuff. I have to agree. Ideas. I think it I think it came from mom. So okay. my mom. Uh, was a first grade teacher, but she was the most fabulous woman. I mean, dressed to the nines, decorated our house and everybody else's house that asked for her opinion, and also just had just an air of class about her. So everything looked more expensive than it actually was. So right. she also taught me that, like, it, 
it can look good without costing a whole lot of money because she had to hide a whole lot of the stuff that she was buying from my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Like, women, like women still do. Yeah, like As we tend to yeah. do, <clears throat> I am not in that particular space anymore. I don't have to hide anything because it's just me. But I will say that was like, like spending money after my husband passed away was... Like, I hesitated. I'm like, I'm supposed to run this by somebody? And I ain't got to run this by nobody? This could be a problem. But it actually isn't. But, yeah, my mom, on the other hand, don't tell you, did <laughs> It's in the trunk. It's in the hall closet. It's in my closet. Uh, Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I did pick up on those things. Yeah, I'm pretty good at keeping secrets, you know, too. We, yeah. it's a need to know situation. <clears throat> um, but yes, my mother was a very creative woman. This actually looks really good on my nails. It's stuck to my fingernail. But anyway, now, speaking of my mom, you and mom were married 28 years. That is correct. 28 years. A long time. Very long time. Um, I was... 26 when she passed away. 12 years ago. Yeah, 26. So my mother passed away from breast cancer, her second bout of breast cancer at that. And in that particular battle, um, I was in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I lived in Fort Smith. I'm pouring you paint anyway, so you can um, okay. paint if you want to. Um, Living in Fort Smith, Arkansas, my job allowed me to move home. So I got to move home with Davin. Davin was a year old uh, to help my dad take care of my mom. And at the time, right before, right when I moved, my dad was still working, but you retired mm -hmm. right after that. I moved home, I think in March. I think you retired in May. Yeah, is that right? Fine. Yeah have the memory of an elephant. You want a big one or a little one? I'm gonna paint you, I'm gonna help you paint your one. Oh, we're gonna paint the same one. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna... Fortunately, these have a <clears throat> open end so you can, you don't have to hold it. It's open and you can just stick your hand in it. So yeah, paint, we paint together. Um, so in my time at home, that was really the first time, cause that was like my first time being an adult and being back at home with my parents. And it was quite interesting. One, because my mother was still my mother and had all the personality in the world, but she was also sick. And experiencing your parents as an adult is quite interesting. Um, <laughs> so I moved home and I don't even remember, I don't think I had a conversation with you. Mom said just, Pay for the toilet paper and the paper towels. And Dad said, I need about 600 a month. <laughs> and this is why I didn't talk to him when I moved back home. <laughs> it was just mom. Mama said, buy the toilet paper and the paper towels, maybe the paper plates or whatever. But I had some of the most precious moments with my mom in her latter six months because dad retired in May, my mom passed away in July. I also got married in September, right after that. It was a long yeah. 2021, no, 2011. Yeah, anyway. But anyway, I feel like in that time, in those six months and the time after is when I really met my dad. Sheila B, my mom, was a personality. I would tell y'all yes. she's a, she is the biggest light in the room <laughs> and the loudest, squeakiest <laughs> wheel in the room too. She, you knew where she was. And because of that, like, you hung out in the background. Like, yeah. I feel like my whole life you was just like, girl, you got it, go. Go just, head on. Go head on. That, that's, what he said. <laughs> that's what he used to say, go head on. And so when my mom wasn't around, I was like, you're funny. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> all of a sudden had a personality and was a whole human. First, he was just my dad. He was around, made sure I got punished when I made a B, or I made sure I did my homework, I read my books, and we uh, did everything we were supposed to do. But being the, well, I'm the middle child. So I have a younger sister, but I have an older sister. My dad's oldest daughter, she has another mom. But hi, Chastity. Hey, Phyllis, all y'all. Hey, Chastity. Anyway, so. I was the oldest of my mom's kids. So when she passed away, I was there to help my dad with all the arrangements and with all her stuff and all this other stuff. And we spent quite a bit of time together. Like the having grown up conversations, like ain't nothing more grown up than planning a funeral. I will tell you that. And really met my dad over that time. And came to find that he was his own person um, outside of my mom, which changed a lot of things for me, our relationship, and also how I looked at my own marriage. So dad, what was it like being married to Sheila Burgess? Oh, wow. Well, of course she was an amazing woman. Indeed she was. Multi-talented like you could do everything a uh, great sense of humor and you didn't have to do nothing just sit back and watch her just work the crowd <laughs> and, and laugh like everybody else did but and she was wonderful she had a great laugh she too. had a great laugh great personality one of the funniest people i've ever known oh tell yeah. me <laughs> uh, y'all met in well, y'all grew up in the same grew town. Grew up in the same town. Same town. Shout out to Earl. Yeah, she was actually working at a restaurant over there when we first started talking. I used to go in for lunch. The truck stop or another no, restaurant? Uh, what another restaurant? Um, Gillum's. Uh, what was the name of it? Uh, L. Smith on the, Jones. On the, the on dairy the, bar. Oh. Yeah, the dairy okay, bar. Okay, I was remember. Working. I ate so many hamburgers, I got tired of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was when y'all were what? Oh, you were, were you in? 21, still in 20. Okay. 20, 21. Okay. Something so, like that. 21. Because we, I was 23 when we got married. So yeah, it must have been about 21. Hmm. So what was it about her that made you go, yep, that one. I pick her. I'm going to marry her. Well, she had a wonderful personality. And she was of course, she was pretty, she was gorgeous, and she was funny. And that that's enough right there. She was funny. So you're a sense of humor him. kind of man. I am. I am. Mm, yeah. I ain't going to give y'all no that's, tips, and this is the only thing <laughs> I'm going to say about my dad. But if you ain't got no sense of humor, mm -mm. don't even try it. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> and she could dress. She could dress. Oh, yeah, don't. You can't. Yeah, old-fashioned. She wasn't old-fashioned. Aesthetics. <laughs> y'all think I'm big on aesthetics. If it don't look good. Don't even worry about it. He don't, like he, don't, he don't even <laughs> see you. I'm sorry. I'm not like that now. Yes, he is. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now, ladies and gentlemen, oh. now he's not. But sense of humor. Yeah. What is what makes you laugh the most? What 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 <clears throat> what if you need a laugh? Where where you get it from? Um, where do I get it from? Yeah, what's where what's where you need a laugh from? Where do you get your biggest laughs from? Um, uh, I used to get them from TikTok until I got addicted to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had to I had to delete that out because uh, it had me up all night you long. You got rid of your TikTok? Yeah, I had to get rid of it. I had to get rid of it. I was spending too much time on that. Mm. Well, okay. Now it's not TikTok where you get it from. Oh, I don't know. Just wherever, wherever. I like. I'm like that, and I watch YouTube a lot. So. YouTube. Yeah. Okay, YouTube. All right, we got one cone. We gonna we gonna make we gonna at least paint two of them to give us you a foundation. Do two? Give us a foundation. Oh, if we were, I knew we were gonna do two. I could have did mine. I see. Done my own. That's why I tried to get you one. You wanted to paint mine. We gonna do a big one and a little one. A bit, a daddy and a baby. All right. So your laughs, okay, YouTube. What what kind of sense of humor would you say you have? 
Oh, I have a great sense of humor. Oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't. Comedy, I man. like, I love. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I love comedy. I love comedy. Favorite comedian? Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. I like Chris Rock too. Chris Rock? Yeah. You, you I like, like Earthquake. Uh, Earthquake? Yeah. Have you, know. you seen any of them in person? Yeah, I saw Dave and uh, Chris last time they came to town. Did you? Yes, I did. I was there too. Was you, girl? <laughs> Yeah, I think you made that happen, didn't you? I think I did. Yeah, I wouldn't have that for the I world. Did. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. It's good to know me. Yeah, it <laughs> and is. And good to be my daddy. So, yeah, anyway. I, I thought about you when I was at the Grizzlies game the other day. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> my friends really enjoyed it, too. I'm, I'm glad you get to show <laughs> your friends a good time. So, the next time you got some tickets, hey. I'm just saying, you know. Um, okay. I got you, Daddy. Yeah, they were really impressed. It was a couple of them first time going. Did they eat sitting. the food? Oh, <laughs> did they eat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if they watched the game. <laughs> did they eat? Uh, so I fortunately uh, have tickets to the Grizzlies games and my seats come with dinner. And drinking. And <laughs> 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 so if you ain't in the mood for a cocktail, uh, you get you some good old wine and beer. I don't like beer, but yeah. all you can drink yeah, wine had. and beer and Man, we had whatever. a great time. But I'm glad. I, I <clears> love <throat> being able to share those types of experiences with my family and my dad loves ball just as much as I do, or actually loves it more than I do. You still play. Yeah. Like faithfully, how many times a week are you on the court? Uh, at if least I can, about three times a week. At least three times a week. This man works out way more than I do. Um, but everybody has seen a few clips of my jump shot and always compliment me on my form. Yeah, this she could have been a baller, y'all. She could have been a baller. Could have been. I was one. Yeah, she, she didn't have no passion for the game. Not she was, even a little bit. <laughs> she was good without even trying to be good. Y'all, that was yeah. like the first time I ever disappointed my dad. Ah. <laughs> that was the first of three dis disappointments that I know for sure. Uh oh. Seventh grade, I just knew I was gonna be a cheerleader. <laughs> My parents put me in gymnastics. I was like, yes, I'm gonna be a cheerleader as soon as I get to junior high. And then I found out you couldn't be a cheerleader until eighth grade. So they're like, well, play basketball, play basketball. Whatever. I try out for the basketball team, instantly make varsity as a seventh grader. So I'm playing with the ninth graders. Also, I'm quite tall as a seventh grader. I'm not too short from where I am right now. I'm playing basketball and I tell my dad, I made the basketball team. Oh yeah, you know, we had a basketball goal in our backyard. It came with the house. We didn't put it out there, it just came with the house. <laughs> That's a big point now. <laughs> it was out there. We moved in that house when I was in third grade. We are now in seventh grade. That basketball goal had been out there and I had never touched it. But now that I'm on the basketball team, dad's like, yeah, come on out here, shoot around, get your, shot, get your shot together, come out of practice, you need to get your reps in. You know, practice makes perfect, you gonna play, you need to be practicing, you know, do this. I don't wanna try and hear none of that. I'm only playing in the seventh grade so I can get to eighth grade and be a cheerleader. I ain't, no, it ain't that serious. Well, I do so well in the seventh grade, the coach asked me to play again in the eighth grade. I think we also found out how much it costs to be a cheerleader. I'm like, playing ball is free. <laughs> and you gotta buy your uniforms and stuff as a cheerleader? Okay, yeah, never mind. So, my dad was always like, why you don't go out in the backyard and shoot around? I'm like, cause I practice at school. What you mean? I gotta go to practice. Why would I practice at home some more? No, you playing, you need to be practicing. If you play this game, you need to take it seriously. I'm like, but why would I take it seriously? Like, I don't understand, <laughs> sir. What you don't understand is, this is giving me something to do. Not, not, I'm not trying to be Lisa Leslie. But, I could have been Lisa Leslie. Like, I was good. I was really, I was. Without really even trying. Quite good, yeah. without trying. Like, the natural yeah. talent, 
I have to say, like, I was, I impressed myself. I really did. I had never done a layup, and they told me what to do for a layup, and I did it. And I jumped the highest out of all the girls. I was like high jump star and all this other stuff, like could touch a backboard. It's very close to dunking. I could try to touch the rim. I didn't quite make it. But anyway, played from seventh grade until I graduated from high school. Was offered basketball scholarships, but also academic scholarships because I, it was imperative that you do well in school because you're gonna get a scholarship to go to school because we ain't paying for school. <laughs> <laughs> we Unless we have to. <clears throat> yeah, I ain't never hear that part. <laughs> I ain't never hear that part. Uh, well, we didn't want you to know that. Uh, you wouldn't have tried as hard. See, the kid that made straight A's from kindergarten to 12th grade wouldn't have tried yeah. as hard. I also didn't have to try that hard at that either. I was just naturally smart. I was a gifted and talented kid. Hence why you're all here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it was imperative that I was great. If you're gonna do something, be the best at it. My mom was the same way, as was my dad. Where did that need for excellence and greatness come from? Well, I saw you had potential all the time. You know, I knew you had it in you. The only thing you didn't have was just the passion for basketball. Now, you know, you had all the other stuff. Just you were naturally smart and all of that, but you know, I wanted you to hoop. But she you wasn't, you wasn't trying to hear. I gave him but. something to do on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, you did that. <clears throat> Tuesdays and Fridays. Come yell at me from the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you from the bleachers. Because he didn't have to yell at me often. Yeah. Often. Your schedule for work changed, like right when I started high school. I remember you couldn't be at, you worked at night and mm -hmm. couldn't come to our games and stuff. And my teachers used to think my mom was a single parent. <laughs> and that was the most hilarious oh, thing to me. And like, I remember oh, that. like, where is your, is your mom? Da, da. And then my dad showed up for a game and they're like, oh, are your mom and dad together? What you mean? I live with this man. <laughs> he buy groceries every week. Like, that's my daddy. What do you mean? Did not know that my parents were together. But I'm like, yes, I have a very active father in my life. He just be at work, ma'am. But anyway, so did you have someone pressing you to be excellent no. in that way? No. No. Nobody. Nobody. No. But, you know, I eventually learned from hanging around people what I needed to do as a father and as a husband and all of that stuff, all of that good stuff. Who would you say, <clears throat> I think I know the answer to this already, but who would you say is your, was a model or example for you? Who do you think? Uncle Walter. Uncle Walter, my Uncle Walter, and um, Coach Clay, Irvin Clay. Got a lot really? from Really? Yeah, got hey, a lot. Uncle Irvin. Yeah. It's not my birth uncle, but. My best friend, one of my best friends' dad, grew up with them. Really, Uncle yep. Irvin. Yeah. I never knew that. Yep. He's excellent father, excellent leader, great coach. Basketball, by the way. Um, that's very interesting. Shout out to Uncle Uncle Irvin, Coach Clay. Hey, Coach Clay. Hey. <laughs> that is quite interesting. Okay. Well, we met them when I was one. But I was four or five. Four or five, yeah. Five at Pleasant Grove. Yeah, I remember the day you joined church. And I got baptized, or I went I went to be, what, what do you call it, giving my life over to Christ. Yeah. At the benediction. And were you a deacon already? No, we had just joined that church, I think. You were yeah. deacon right after that, like yeah, five minutes later. Because <laughs> you've been a deacon my whole <laughs> life, I feel like. Another thing you have impressed upon us as all of your children are the importance of finances. Now, all I knew really growing up was make the money and save the money and don't spend too much money. And now, I, doing that in a particular balance didn't quite make sense until I was well over 30, but financial and fiscal responsibilities were huge to you. I remember Oh, I remember you sitting at the dining table cutting on mama's credit cards <laughs> and him finding out she had all these extra credit cards he didn't know about. <laughs> and 
Where did that come from? I honestly don't know, Coco. I honestly don't know. So Coco. It was coming at some point. <laughs> Coco. But yes, don't know? It was just something that, it was with me in high school. I read finance books and investing books and really? all of that kind of stuff. And I never hung around anybody that knew anything about I was going to say, I don't, I don't know so. anybody outside of you that talked about money as much as you did. So, I, I don't know. Huh. Interesting. Well, my dad and I now have very interesting conversations around investing. Um, I am new to the investment game, but my dad has always talked about the stock market and trading and all these words that I didn't understand that I'm just now getting into, but he taught me that there was a way to build wealth that didn't involve going to work. And that has been one of the biggest things that I have tried to do since now making a certain level of money. You take some of that money and make that money work for you. So it's in the stock market. I don't trade per se, but that's one of the things I plan to do because that's what he taught me. That was also how you were able to retire at what, 40? 49. 49. 49. You retired, you got pension, then you got bored, and then went back to work, and then you retired again, didn't you? No, not yet. I love my job, so I'm, I'm still there for now. He works, sort of. He's supposed <laughs> to be at work right now. <laughs> I love my job. He loves his job. Hey, over there, I ain't gonna put you on blast. <laughs> Thank you for letting my daddy take out work. Sort of. They don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. I'm on lunch. It is lunch. It's lunch time. Yeah, it's lunch time. It's lunch time. Okay, we got some black Christmas trees. Let's black let's, Christmas trees. Let's make them cute. Um, all right, we're gonna let this one dry. And you ain't drink no more of your silent night. I oh, you on lunch paint. break. You on I've lunch break. <laughs> you on lunch. I'll sit for the both of us. Cause it's my job. Did you ever think I would be here? Nah. Like, no what? Well, what you, do you, you think about? What do you think I do for a living? <laughs> what is my job? What do you think my job well, is? Well, you do little crafts and stuff. Oh, and, you know, you get on Facebook and Instagram, and you know, <clears throat> you, you do a little stuff on there. You do, do a little, little traveling and stuff, and that's about it. <laughs> well, you, want, there we go. you want a little show? You had a little show on TV and so no, but for real though, I'm so proud of. All that you do now, I don't, I can't keep up with, you know, I'm not on Instagram, and so when most people say, I saw Carmion over and blah, 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 I'm like, yeah, she's doing real good, and they're like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know yeah, what she's doing. sometimes I forget so. to make the call. Like, <clears throat> daddy, I'll be in Morocco for 11 days, I'll be back, but. Yeah, I do, I do a little bit of everything now. Yeah. But I, I grew up knowing I had to get a good education and a good job. So I didn't have to ask them for money by the time I left the house. That was, yes. that was the idea. <laughs> Make good grades so you can go to school, get a good job so you don't ask me for nothing. Take care of yourself. And I got a, I got a good job, I got an education, I got a good job. It was a job that none of us thought I would have because I didn't Absolutely know interior not. design was a profession. And I tried I, to talk you out of it. And he did. I told, I called my parents and was like, I changed my major from physical therapy to interior design. My dad is like, what is that? You ain't gonna make no money doing that. Don't nobody make no money doing that. That ain't no real <laughs> job. And I'm thinking it's gotta be a real job because it's a major, but also he was like, that's like majoring in English. You can only do that. It's only a real thing if you go teach. How you, you, how you teach interior design? That ain't no real job. I'm like, Whoa. well, thankfully, I wasn't that child that switched up their major and then had to go fight and scrape and struggle to find a job. I was offered a job before I even finished college, so I was like, Daddy, I 
got a job. I moved into Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I have benefits. <laughs> benefits. I got health insurance and all these things. Wonderful. So yeah. I got a real job. So yeah, he was he was yeah. okay. After like my entire year and a half of being a interior design major. Well, I realized when I realized I couldn't talk you out of it. I knew that was what you wanted to do. And that was so. the first, really the first decision I had made mm -hmm. for myself. Yeah. The first time I said, you know what? Nobody told me to do this. Nobody said this was the right way. Nobody is expecting this of me, but this is interesting to me. So this is what I'm gonna do. And I think that was more of the shock than anything. Like, what you mean you ain't doing what I told you to do? I told you to go get a good job. <laughs> Oh my God, who's to say this ain't a good job? But anyway, that was the first time I made a decision for myself. And it all worked out. Thankfully, it took me winning Design Star Next Gen for him to go, <laughs> you know what, you was right. <laughs> you know what, the little, your little job was all right. Your little coloring books turned out all right. <laughs> it became real. I was recognized for doing what I do. Well, we done with this, but I got some rapid fire questions for you. Like three of them. Okay. Okay. First question. Wings or barbecue? Wings. Wings. Okay. Oh, is your, this is a one point A. Favorite barbecue, restaurant or somebody house? Somebody's house. Somebody house. I'm telling yeah. you, don't come here looking for your. You mean you can get it in Memphis restaurant, but the best yeah. barbecue was at somebody house. Okay, number two. Uh, watching an NBA game in person or playing basketball yourself. Would you rather watch it? at a game, like in the stadium. Depends on who's playing. Oh. Depends on who's playing. Okay, favorite team? Oh, uh, I like the Lakers. I like LeBron. Uh, I just like LeBron. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. I didn't know you were like Lakers. Yeah. Actually, I take that back, because I did know that. I did know you were a Lakers fan. Y'all, my dad, who got you? My sister. The. Y'all, I'm telling you. Where did, what happened to that jacket? Uh, Jasmine Burgess has it. Angie's daughter has it in New York. I'm like, how you end up with it? My dad had a suede LA Lakers varsity jacket that had Burgess engraved on the back. The body's leather and the sleeves were suede and it was purple. And my dad wore one time to one of my games or something. I don't know where it was. <laughs> And everybody was like, yo daddy play for the Lakers. Yo daddy play for the Lakers. Yeah, we in West Memphis, Arkansas, and my daddy play for the Lakers. Yes, people. But that jacket, Jasmine, I'm gonna need that jacket back. I'm yeah. gonna need that jacket back. Okay, last question. If there's a fire, who you saving, me or daddy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna say both of y'all. I gotta get both of y'all out of there. Oh, I, I would have been both. okay if you said that. I gotta get both. You getting both of us. Yeah, I gotta get both of y'all. I appreciate it, Daddy. Well, thank you for joining me My and spending some time on camera. Thank you for having me. Okay, give a little shout out. Say something to the people that get on my nerves on a day-to-day -day basis anytime I cross that bridge and they know I'm going to Arkansas. Tell the people hello or something, <laughs> something. <laughs> hello, hello to all of you out there in, uh, what, what is it? Instagram, uh, land. Instagram land, YouTube land, Facebook land. Uh, thank you all for supporting Coco. Thank you so much. And with that, happy holidays, friends. Happy holidays, everybody.